Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Today is Thursday, April 18th. Welcome to episode four of Mornings with Grace. I am very excited to be here. I'm very excited that this is our fourth episode, okay? We are just keeping it going. We are keeping it moving. We will make it at at bare minimum. We will be making it to the end of April. Okay, so I'm so glad that you guys are here with me. If you are not on my email list, make sure you go to dare to pursue.co to make sure that you get on my email list. Again, that is dare to pursue.co to make sure that you are on my email list because I do send out emails every time I go live and all of the good things. For those of you here on TikTok, this live will be saved. It will be posted to my YouTube channel. So if you head on over to daretopursue.co and click that YouTube button, you'll be able to see all of our episodes. Again, this is episode four, you guys, and the title is Order Creates Peace and Freedom. Order Creates Peace and Freedom. Oh, gosh. This is going to be so good. And and, I mean, every day is really good. I feel like anytime we commune together in the morning, the Lord meets us where we are, right? And I think that is just always a blessing. I think that is an honor and a privilege to be able to commune with God in the way that we get to commune with him, in the way that we get to meet with him on a daily basis if we make the choice to do so, right? So welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. This is Mornings with Grace. Um, This is where we spend our mornings really seeking out the Lord, number one, for that grace. What is grace? Grace is undeserved favor, undeserved favor. So Mornings with Grace is where we come together to command and win our day. So what better way than to do that? Than with grace. It's undeserved favor for our day. It's undeserved favor for the next hour, two hours, three hours, next 24 hours. It's undeserved favor for our week if that is a part of your prayer. Like it's just undeserved favor. And as we are in episode number four, like I said, order creates peace and freedom. Many of us are still bound, and I feel that very strongly in my heart this morning. And so I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we're going to jump right in. Make sure that you share this live out to people that you love, people that you know that are in pursuit. Um, And we are going to pray in. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for the honor and privilege to be able to come and commune with your sons and daughters this morning. I thank you for Dare to Pursue. I thank you for your covering over Dare to Pursue. I thank you for your covering over every single person connected to Dare to Pursue via MVP Day or Mornings with Grace. I thank you, God, that you are covering them, you are protecting them, and supernatural immunity is their portion. I thank you, God, for their willingness to pursue you in this season. I thank you for your will for their willingness to commit and win their day using biblical truth using your word. So I just thank you, Lord, for every person that is here. I thank you for the breakthrough that they're going to experience, not just today, but just in this season, in this year and beyond. I thank you for the generational curses that they are breaking right here and now that they may not even realize it. And I thank you for the generational wealth that they are starting to build right here and now, even if they don't realize it just yet. I ask, Lord, that you decrease me and increase you right here and you allow your spirit to flow freely and that every person here hears exactly what they need to hear. I thank you for meeting with us in Jesus' name. Yeshua of Nazareth. Amen, amen, amen. All right, you guys. So, like I said, today's title or topic is Order Creates Peace and Freedom. And the unfortunate truth is many of us, we don't, we're not experiencing the peace that surpasses all understanding that God wants us to experience. We're not experiencing the freedom here on earth that he wants us to experience. Well, 
according to this topic today, you know, it says order creates this. And, and I 100% believe that. But I believe because we either don't know about the process that we need to go through, or we don't understand what our pursuit must entail, or we don't really understand, we are ignorant, right, to Satan's devices. What does ignorance, ignorant mean? It means a lack of knowledge, right? We don't have the knowledge that we need to be able to point out the generational curses. We don't understand how to break them. We don't understand how important they are to get rid of, right? And so we kind of just continue to walk around and just accept like, oh, I guess it is just what it is. It is what it is. I have to just accept it. And and that's just not the case, okay? So before I get started, just in case, so I don't forget, this is Mornings with Grace. We are doing this challenge, like I said, until God tells us to stop to just meet and command and win our day, okay? And um, we are using, we're using the guide of this devotional, Command Your Morning by Dr. Cindy Trim, just in case I forget to tell you guys. Um, this was my go-to when I first started, when I was all by myself, I felt lonely. I felt like I was in isolation instead of incubation. I felt like, you know, I really didn't have anywhere else to turn and God led me to this devotional as well as her book, Commanding Your Morning. And that's where I really started to get the revelation about uh, biblical truths and how to apply them to my everyday life. And so I'm here sharing that with you guys again. Marie Marie, please don't forget your question. I would love to hear about it because I actually am about to talk about repenting. So go ahead and put that in the chat. And so before we even get started, of course, I had my plan, and that is to go along with the order of the devotional, but God has his own plan as well. And so remember I shared with you guys, sometimes I wake up and there's songs in my, my spirit, and I'm like, I ain't heard that song in forever. Why is that song in my spirit? Number one, and then I also said, you know, sometimes those songs will be in your spirit and you're like, uh-uh, that got to go. Why is that even there, right? Ag's got to bring something else, bring a new song into your spirit to start your day with him. And so, of course, that happened again this morning. There was one song in my spirit and I was like, uh-uh, that got to go, Lord. What's going on here? <laughs> I'm reading my Bible and everything. Why is this in my spirit, right? And then uh, the number, uh, another song came in my spirit came into my spirit and it was like uh you guys know that if you know it you know it if you don't you don't and um basically the song says I can hear your heart crying out for me I can hear your heart crying out for me and again I was just like okay God why did you bring this song into my spirit because <laughs> this is not a gospel song like where's where, where, where's the music right Where's the tunes that I need to start this day that you have made? And he, he kept that song in my spirit over and over. I can hear your heart crying out for me. Girl, I can hear it, hear it crying for me, for me, for me. And obviously while that song is a worldly song, good morning. And while that song is a worldly song, he, he wanted me to dig a little bit deeper. And so what I heard after digging a bit deeper is just like, there's so many of us where our heart is crying out for God. He can hear your heart crying out for him, but you don't know how to seek him. You don't know how to pursue him. You don't know how to, you don't know how to have a heart after his own heart. Like you're, you're conflicted. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing it back to me. You're conflicted between two opinions, right? You're conflicted. You have these things going on over here. They are, they seem fun. You got your friends, you got your family. They're doing all these things. These are the things that you're used to doing. And then over here, you hear God tugging at your heart. You hear him pulling after you. Like I've called you to more son. I've called you to more daughter. I've called you to really understand who you are in me. And so I think that that was great Lord or uh, great Marie Marie that you asked the question, you know, how to fully repent um, and how to do it correctly. And if you keep doing it, how do you power over sin? I think that is a awesome question on this morning. And we are going to start with just simple repentance. Marie Marie, I have a lot of resources where I talk about repentance on my YouTube channel, on here, on TikTok. Um, 
yeah, YouTube and TikTok for sure. However, to say it plain and simple, repentance is about a change of heart. It's about changing your heart posture. And because I believe he had that song on my heart this morning, it was no coincidence. And here you are with that question. Um, it's just a change of heart posture. Like, are you really sorry? It's not about going to God and just crying and being like, oh my gosh, Lord, I'm so sorry. But do you really apologize? Uh, when, you, when you repent and you truly go to him with repentance, you're saying, I'm not going to do it again. And I'm not saying that means we're going to be 100% perfect, right? It doesn't mean that we're going to be, none of us are 100% perfect. Even the apostles and the disciples were not 100% perfect, okay? So that's not the case here. However, you're going to God with genuineness in your heart. I will not do this again. Lord, help me not to do this again. I repent. I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me, right? And I think it's a two-step process, right? Because you have to make a decision to repent. You have to come to the understanding that what you did was wrong, what you did was sin, right? So you go to God and you repent, and or you make that decision to repent. And once you make that decision to repent, then you go into this place or this space of you go into receiving his forgiveness, Right. Because if you don't receive his forgiveness and you don't really forgive yourself, then, yes, you repented. But then there will possibly still be an open door to the enemy, an open door for him to come in and allow shame him, the enemy, and allow shame, guilt. Right. You know, all of these things that are not from God to continue to come in because you have not accepted God's forgiveness because you are still so hurt at yourself or hurt or traumatized or feeling guilty or feeling shameful about the things that you have engaged in. And so God is saying he hears your heart. And I think that it's so wonderful that you had that question on this morning. He hears your heart crying out for him. Be genuine in that, right? So really quick, repentance. Repentance is literally you going to God genuinely with a heart saying that you are sorry this is good i feel as if i just repent because i know it's wrong but not because i actually truly want to stop and that's where you got to figure out that difference right and i've repented multiple times for the same thing right again it's about the heart. What is your heart truly after? What does your heart truly want? Okay. And so really ask God, help me to have a heart that actually wants to stop. Help me to actually change my behavior. Help me to take the taste of this thing out of my mouth, right? It doesn't have to just be about food, right? But literally take the taste of, of this activity. Take the taste of, you know, this person take the taste of this food or this drink or this drug right out of my mouth Lord, because i no longer want to desire it take it away from me now be careful when you ask for that okay be careful when you ask for that because god will give it to you especially when you go to him with a heart of genuineness he will give it to you and it may not always look like how you want it to look um, there's plenty, plenty, plenty of examples, but you, you'll know immediately you go for, you know, let's say, I don't know, a certain food or let's say alcohol or something. You decide like, Hey God, take the taste of alcohol out of my mouth. The next time you try to drink or you attempt to drink, it, it's probably not going to be very pretty because he doesn't want you to do it. Like, so, right, I'm a behavior scientist. I didn't even say all that. You guys, my name is Victoria Grace. For anybody that is new, I'm a behavior scientist. And God has given me the unique ability to be, to be able to pair the science of behavior change with faith, with biblical truths. And I think it goes together so well. When you pair a negative, I'll just use that term, a negative feeling or reaction or experience with a certain thing, usually we don't want to go back to that thing again. Usually that then will change our behavior. 
usually that thing will then change our behavior, you know. Okay, let's go back to the example of alcohol. You ask God to take the taste of alcohol out of your mouth. You take two sips, right? You don't even do shots. You don't do anything. You just take two sips and you are sick. You got a headache. You throwing up all the things. Most likely, if you don't remember the prayer that you prayed to God about removing the taste of alcohol from your mouth, most likely you probably don't want to do that thing again, right? But then at some point, it'll mesh together for you like, oh yeah, I did ask God to remove the taste of this out of my mouth. And he did it. He showed up. He actually did it. Um, so I think that that's really important, right? So repentance really quick, and then we're going to move on. I want you guys to say this with me. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come before you this morning according to your word in Psalms chapter 5, verse 3, where it says, In the morning, you hear my voice. I present my requests before you, and I wait in expectancy. So this morning, Lord, I come before you with a heart of repentance. I apologize, God. I am sorry, God, for. I ask, Lord, that you forgive me. I ask, Lord, that you give me a heart after your own heart. I ask, Lord, that you help me to deal with this thing. Remove every remnant of it from my heart, from my mind, from my GI track, from my memory. I thank you, God, for your forgiveness on this morning. Help me to not do it again. Help me to stop. Take the taste of, out of my mouth. Take the taste of it out of my mouth, Lord. I no longer want to desire it. Again, Lord, I receive your forgiveness this morning. Thank you for removing any guilt or shame. Thank you for removing the pieces of that thing that is trying to keep me shattered, that's trying to keep me down, that's trying to keep me depressed, that's trying to isolate me, that's trying to get me to have false idols in my life, whatever the case may be. And again, I say, I receive your forgiveness. I receive your peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. You know what? Not just amen, just yet. I reject. I renounce. I denounce. And I divorce myself from every evil, demonic covenant. Every cycle of chaos. Every demonic pattern, every soul tie, every word curse, every chain, fetter, bondage, proclivity, captivity, and the like associated with that sin. And I replace everything that I just rejected, denounced, renounced, and divorced myself from with your love, with your peace, with your divine authority, with your divine power, with your divine grace, and with your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. Okay? So, 
pray that was really good for you guys. Again, if you came on late, no worries. This will be posted to my YouTube channel. You can go to daretopursue.co. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer until you believe it. I used to do this thing with um, trusting God, and I used to just make these I trust you Jesus statements, and I would share them on Instagram. They're still there, but I would just do it until I believed in my heart what I what it was that I was saying. And repentance is about a decision. Forgiveness is about a decision. You're not going to feel it immediately, but it's about a decision that you make. So keep that in mind. And so again, you guys, our title for today is Order Creates Peace and Freedom is based off of Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one. And in the New Living Translation, it says, for everything, there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven for every season i'm sorry for everything there is a season a time for every activity under heaven and i think that this is super important okay there's a time and a season for everything there's a reason we're here right now and god had me to start back up mornings with grace there is a reason for it i truly believe that there are no coincidences there is a reason for it you're here right now in this moment in time for such a time as this for a reason, okay? For a reason. And so I had some backup script scriptures to go along with what I was talking about concerning the heart. And I'm going to share that with you guys really quickly as well because I almost forgot. First, Psalm 84 verses 1 through 2. Again, what did I tell you guys the song said? I can hear your heart crying out for me. I can hear your heart crying out for me. That's the main thing. And I feel like God is literally saying on this morning, he hears your heart crying out for him, but you haven't really changed your behavior. Your behavior. You haven't really pursued him. You haven't really sought after him. And this is a good first step showing up for things like mornings with grace, right? Starting your day with commanding and winning your day, starting your day with biblical truths. This is a great start. It's a great start, but I want to share with you guys Psalms 84 verses one through two, where it says, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's armies. I long, yes, I faint with longing, like I literally faint with a longing, with a, I just desire it so much with a longing to enter the courts of the Lord. With my whole being, body, and soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. In the King James Version of this same one, it says, My soul longs, yea, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. My heart and my flesh, my flesh crieth out for the living God. You could literally meditate on that word all day, specifically those of us who our hearts hurt, specifically those of us who can't are tr struggling to trust him, specifically those of us who are really starting our pursuit and we're trying to really pursue after him. We, we want our heart to be after his own heart. We want our heart to be made of flesh again. We don't want it to be hard and hardened. The word says right here, my heart and my flesh cries out for the living God. I don't think that's a coincidence. And so for those of you who are faint of heart, for those of you who are really struggling on this morning, I just want to give you this encouragement that you are here for this moment in time for a reason. There is a reason that you are here. Do not grow weary in doing good. Do not grow weary in showing up. Do not think that this is just the end and you just have to accept whatever it is. You don't. You don't. You don't. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which is one of my faves, okay? It says, hold on, King James Version. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. In other version, paths. In other versions, it says, and he will make your paths straight. 
And I just think that that is so important for those of us who, who in our heart, we are just struggling. You woke up really heavy this morning. You woke up just feeling like, what is the point? What is the reason? And I promise you there is a point and there is a reason. You were created. You were born for such a time as this. You are the real MVP, the most valuable player in your bloodline right here, right now. God has given you the anointing. He's given you the grace, the authority to break generational curses, to make the hard decisions, to do the hard things so that you could then create and build generational wealth. Okay. <clears throat> I just want to give you guys that. Again, that was Psalms 84 verses 1 through 2 and then Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 6. He hears your heart crying out after him. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Okay. Now, if this is your first time here, make sure you go back to episodes one through three. This is episode four of Mornings with Grace, where we come together to command and win our day. Go ahead and go listen to those because everything literally builds upon each other. Okay. I can't make this up. It just builds upon each other. Today's title is Order Creates Peace and Freedom. And like I said, it's based off of Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one. And it says, for everything, there is a season, a time for every activity under the sun. The devotional goes on to say, do not miss out on the rewards of well-managed time. Order is what gives you the freedom to be creative. Order gives you the peace of mind you need to tune into God's supernatural frequencies and tap into divine inspiration. So when y'all get to talking about vibrations and frequencies and all of that, I don't know what, who, what your source is. What's your source of that power? If it's not, like I said, meditating on the word of God, is if it's not after Elohim, uh, uh, Yeshua, right, Yahweh, if you're not going after his frequencies, his vibrations, then you're chasing after the wrong thing. And again, chasing after the wrong thing will only open demonic doors and portals to continue to have legal access, to flow frequently, to flow um, without, you know, any cause to them in your life. So without order, you will be distracted with the cares and concerns of this life so that you cannot steal your mind to hear God's voice. It is impossible to imagine and envision when you are overextended and stressed. You need to schedule time to purposefully paint the canvas of your life by investing in creative dreaming. I call this envisioning, envisioning with the Lord. Stop to think, stop to commune with him, stop in your day, make time in your day to just sit in silence, allow the Lord to speak to you, order your day so that you have the time and peace you need to create the masterpiece God has preordained for you. Absolutely love that. So glad you got so much confirmation. Love hearing that. So before I go into our declaration and our prayer for the day, I want to go back to where it says, without order, you will be distracted with the cares and concerns of this life so that you cannot steal your mind to hear God's voice. I think this is so important. Without order, without order, without discipline in your life, you will be distracted. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? Before I go into my understanding of it now, I'm going to share with you um, another understanding, but it literally means to prevent someone from giving full attention to something. So if you're distracted with the cares of this world, remember, what does the word say? To cast our cares on him because he cares for us. If you're distracted with the cares, with the burdens of this world, you won't be able to focus on God, you won't be able to focus on what it is that he's put on your plate to 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 create, to put out into the world or the, what he's put into your belly to birth into this world. Right. You will be. Distracted, you won't be able to give full attention to what you need to give full attention to your children, your marriage, 
whatever it is, you won't be able to give full attention to those things because you are so worried with, you are so burdened by the things of this world, the cares of this world. Okay. And I think that this is super important. Distract also means to divert attention from something like you're on a straight path. And, and this is good, right? Because we talked about cycles of chaos yesterday, right? You're doing good. You're doing good. You're doing good. And then boom, something hits you. And now you're diverted. You're diverted. So no longer are you on the path of straight and narrow, but now you're over here because now you're distracted. Another cycle of chaos has come in to distract you and move you over here. So now you on pause for a few days. How do I know? Cause I, I'm just speaking from a, a friend's experience. How do I, 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 okay. But now you're distracted. You're off track. Sometimes that may last for a day, a week, a month, a year, years for some of us. I don't know where you are, but that's why we're putting up the mirror to ourselves to figure out what it is that we have done and how it is we can change things for ourselves. So, It also says divert one's attention from something worrying or unpleasant by doing something different or more pleasurable. And unfortunately, in a spiritual sense, a lot of times we are diverting ourselves from something that is not worrisome and this, that is pleasant to focus on something that is worrisome and that is unpleasant. So Prophetess Tiffany Montgomery gave this example and she said that she had did some research on the word distract um, and distracting. And basically, long story short is back in medieval times, they would, and I love watching history shows. I love learning about history. So I've seen this physics, so I can see this in my mind as I share it with you guys. And so basically what they used to do as a punishment, y'all also know crucifixion was a form of punishment as well, but Another form of punishment was death by distraction. Okay. What they would do would what they would do is put rope or whatever, tie your arms and your legs to four different horses. So you'd have a horse on each leg, a horse on each arm, stretching you out wide, and they would beat the horses so that the horses would run. And the horses would run, pretty much distracting your body pretty much pulling your limbs from your body in different areas and i think that is just powerful why because think about it what is the purpose of your enemy his purpose is to steal kill and destroy you steal from you kill you and destroy you his purpose is to get you off track his purpose is to get you to not believe in god his purpose is to get you to you know worship him um his purpose is to get you to lose your faith his purpose is all of these things to pretty much divert you right divert you on the path that god has you on to take you off the path that is straight and narrow and put you on that wide path that he has so many other people on that is his purpose and so think about it, death by distraction. This right here says without any order in your life, you will be distracted with the cares and concerns of this life. So I think that should be a huge eye opener for us. Whatever is going on, I don't care how much something costs. I don't care what they do on the job. You cannot be distracted or worried about what the world has going on. I don't care what's going on with your family. I don't care what's going on with your, your marriage. Get into prayer. Prayer changes things. This Your tongue has, has life and death in it. You can literally change a thing if you knew the power, the authority, and the grace that you have. If you knew how to truly establish yourself, if you dove deep into his word and you no longer lacked knowledge... You then get to a place of establishing yourself in the realm of the spirit, which then gives you authority to change a thing and make a thing change because you said so, because you walked into a room. I just thought that was so good. Death by distraction. So think about it. It may not be a physical death, but think about how you look in the realm of the spirit, worried about Tom, Dick and Harry. Think about how you look in the realm of the spirit. You are being pulled from every limb 
the enemy is doing his best to pull you from every which way so that you cannot focus on what it is that God has for you to focus on. So, so, so good, right? So again, order creates peace peace that surpasses all understanding and freedom. Again, we're breaking generational curses here. When you break a curse, right, you are now free, right? The purpose is to break those curses so that then we can build generational wealth, right? And so I pray that this was good for you. If you came in late, the recording is available on YouTube. Please go back and listen to this. Apply these principles to your life dare to pursue.co so you can go to my youtube channel it's just mind-blowing to me how the enemy keeps us as christians so bound and there are so many christians or so many people who were christian or who say they're christians whatever it is it's just so many different levels of christians and none of them are operating in the place of peace and freedom that God has for them. None of them are operating in the place of wealth. Jesus is wealthy place that is readily available to us because we are ignorant to what our role is. We are ignorant to the access that we have. We are ignorant, right? You're welcome. We are ignorant to these things. And that's why the enemy can continue to keep us bound because we're ignorant to it. I just, so anyways, that's all I have for you guys today, but we are going to go ahead and do our declaration and our prayer. You'll just repeat after me again, because we are commanding our day. We're commanding our morning so that we can walk into this day with divine victory, divine activation, y'all, uh, divine wealth in this day. Like that thing is going to happen for you. It's going to happen. Why? Because that's what God said and what door God opens, no man can shut. And what door uh, God closes, no man can open. So like if he said it's yours, it's yours. If he said this was the last year you and your family was going to be living in poverty, this is the last year, last month, last day. That's what he said, period. All right, y'all. So let's do our declaration. And oh, one more thing. Our declaration mentions Deborah. The judge Deborah, and I'm gonna go through this real quick. So, um, before Israel had kings, right? They had judges. These were the people that God appointed to pretty much lead Israel, to lead Israel to do the right thing. And unfortunately, they did not. <laughs> they would not. Um, and I guess they could not. I don't know. Um, and so, anyways. Deborah was one of the ones where after she came in and they actually listened to what she had to say because of the voice of the Lord speaking through her, Israel actually lived in a place of peace for 40 years, which is amazing, 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 amazing. And so this one talks about order and they talk about how Deborah understood order. And there was one place where Deborah was talking to um I don't know what the man name was. I can't remember, but he was talking to one of, she was talking to one of the leaders. And when she was talking to him about what was the next steps in battle, right? She was giving the battle orders. When she was talking to him about what was the next steps in battle, he was like, come with me. Mind you, this is a woman. Back in those times, the women stay with the kids, stay back. They don't go to battle. They don't, you know, they're not doing all these things. And Deborah said to him, if I go with you, because she understood order, but he still had the opportunity to make his choice. She said, if I go with you, then you will not get the honor for winning this battle. A woman will get the honor. Now, when I first read it, I was like, oh, okay. So that means the honor will be on Deborah, right? Because he brought the prophet, the judge, Deborah along with him. So they're going to give the honor to her because they know like the people, right? They know she was the one kind of giving him instructions and telling him what to do. And y'all, it wasn't even about her. OK, again, she understood God's divine order. She understood. I just got to go with what God said and whatever he said is going to take us to a place of victory at the end of the day. It wasn't even because of Deborah that they ended up winning. It was actually because they was already on a winning streak because God or Deborah was hearing directly from God. But then the king that they were fighting, right, like his territory, he fled. And when he fled, he went to this tent. Y'all, he went to the tent 
of the wife of the brother-in-law of Moses. Get this. How, how does that happen, right? He went to the tent of the wife of someone who was the brother-in-law to Moses. Now, when I read this, I'm like, this is juicy. This is getting good. What's going to happen? Because, you know, Moses married into, he didn't marry anybody that was into, um, that was in the tribes of Israel. He married outside of the tribe. So I'm thinking like, oh, what's going to happen here? Y'all, she knew what was up. Clearly she knew what was up. She knew this king was fighting Israel and she took a little hammer. I don't know why I got a spoon over here, but she took a hammer and a nail and he was hiding in there. He took a nap. He was tired. She done impaled it into his head. And because of her, they won. They pretty much won because he, they, he, the king was gone, right? They pretty much won. But I just say all that to say like Deborah understood order. And so her as a woman, she gave that man the choice, right? To allow her to come along. She let him know what would be the consequences, not necessarily bad consequences, right? But the consequences of not following order. And so instead of him getting the honor for winning that battle, a woman received the honor for winning that battle. And that is what is now in our history book, the Bible. So I just thought that that was super interesting, um, how important order is, and it could literally change what what history is made if we don't if we don't follow specific order right it could change what history looks like so here is our declaration for the day father place upon me deborah's anointing for balance show me what activities can be removed from my schedule from my life or from anything that pertains to me, or that can be delegated to someone else. I never want to be too busy to sit at your feet and learn from you. Holy Spirit, as I spend time with you, download creative ideas. Empower me to excel in my profession. Show me the cause I was created to champion. Empower me to excel in my home life. Empower me to excel in my spiritual life. Empower me to excel and live in a place of unlimited possibilities. I seek you first because then all these things will be added unto me. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua of Nazareth, amen. I pray that this was good to you guys. Again, we will be back here at 6.15 a.m. Central Standard Time tomorrow, okay? 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I pray you guys have an amazing, amazing day. Walk boldly and confidently in the things of the Lord and meditate on the scripture today. Again, if you're going to meditate, do it right, please. Please do it right. Meditate on the scripture today. Meditate on Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. Meditate on Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 6. And meditate on Psalm 84 verses 1 through 2. Again, this recording will be uh, posted to my YouTube channel. And yeah, make sure on my email list, daretopursue.co. You will receive emails from me, reminders, events, all the things. Have a great day, guys.